The present generation below 35 has grown up used to high economic growth year after year, and they take security and success for granted. And because they believe that all is well, they are less willing to make sacrifices for the benefit of the others in society. And they are more concerned about their individual and family's welfare and success, not the community's or the society's well-being. But this is very dangerous because things can go terribly wrong, terribly quickly. These people are simply not aware of Singapore's vulnerabilities. All they read about is that Singapore is either number one or number two as the most competitive country, number one or number two as a seaport or airport, or has number one or number two as the airline. And from time to time they complain that we are driving the people too hard, making life too stressful. So why not settle for number three or number four or number five? Does it matter? My answer is, yes, it does matter. For if we are not near the top in competitiveness, there is no reason why we should have a seaport at all, or an airport, or an airline. A population base of three million, and you run a Boeing fleet that SIA has, there must be something special that made SIA what it is. Indeed, if we are not that something special, why should there be a separate independent Singapore in existence at all? And that is the awful simple truth. When I set out my Singapore dream, I was a young man of 20 plus, working with the unions from 1952, was for a democratic society, keen, vibrant, a united people, who regardless of race, language and religion, and those words mean uh, very powerful forces at work. The own belief is just three words race, language, and religion. They are deep emotional pulls that tugs you and makes you do things your common sense tells you you should not be doing. A society based on justice and equality which will achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for the nation. Thirty years ago, my colleagues, younger, more dreamy eyed, settled the words of our pledge. We did not focus our eyes on our navels, or we would have missed that rainbow in the sky. We pursued them. And that was how we came to build today's Singapore. For the young, let me tell you, the sky has turned brighter. There's a glorious rainbow that beckons those with the spirit of adventure. And there are rich findings at the end of that rainbow. To the young and to the not so old, I say, look at that horizon. Follow that rainbow. Go ride it. Not all will be rich. Quite a few will find a grain of gold. Dig it up.